privilege to hear from you. Thank you for gathering us in this church. We don't take it in vain. We pray that your Holy Spirit will speak to us in a way that, Lord, our lives will be completely altered and that we'll engage with the heavens in a very specific way. And anyone seated under the sound of my voice will hear the rumblings of heaven and the voice of heaven and the thunderings of heaven into their hearts, speaking, saying, this is a way, walk in it. We give you glory and we give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we do pray and we do believe. Amen. Turn with me to the book of Isaiah. Very quickly, turn with me to the book of Isaiah. This message I'm going to share with you. The Lord had given me this message for last Sunday. But the testimonies overtook the, test, the, the message. And I felt we are in that season where the sower overtakes the reaper. And the reaper overtakes the sower. Glory be to Jesus. And that we had entered a place through those testimonies that I could not add anything to it because the Lord had decided to plant a seed in our spirits of his word that was very powerful through the testimonies. Glory be to Jesus. How many were blessed by the testimonies last Sunday? Glory be to Jesus. Now, this word God gave to me as a prophetic word to this church. And we are going to combine it with the prophetic word that the Lord spoke to us and is a prophetic word to the body of Christ. Uh, let me say globally, even so more nationally, because I have had more preachers speaking about the open door. Glory be to Jesus. So that's not just a word. That's, that's a word that the Lord gave to our apostolic leader the open door, the ear of the open door. And I pray that you're still remembering the four characteristics of the open door as we shared during the crossover service. Praise the Lord. I pray that you're still remembering. Let me hear from the church. What is the first nature of the open door this year. Number one is a door of escape. Glory be to Jesus. And I pray that you're laboring on that matter. That any trap, any snare, any prison that you have operated in for the last many years, this year shall be a door of escape. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Number two is a door of access. Glory be to Jesus. We are accessing what the Lord has kept for they that love him. And you are among those that the Lord has loved. And those that love the Lord. And God has put a doorway of access in front of you. To be able to access that which he has put in store for you this year. That which he has freely given to you. Number three, a door of what? It's a door of opportunity. This year you wake up to every day. Is an opportunity. Every person you meet is an opportunity. Every place you enter is an opportunity. This year is a door of opportunity. So may God help you to see opportunities everywhere you are. The troubles you go through, they are opportunities. Glory be to the name of the Lord. The hardships you encounter, they are opportunities. The friendships you encounter, they are opportunities. Glory be to the name of the Lord. May you access opportunities. We declared as we are beginning this year that this is not an year that is opening up, but these are opportunities opening up. Thank you for that. Amen. So as the year unfolds, every day, call it an opportunity in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Every meeting you come to in this church, Nina Fasi. Kila mkutano unahudhuria ni nini? Ni nafasi. Pale nyuma mnanisikia. 
nipungieni mkono bwanaweza siwe sana kila mahali unapoingia ni nini ni nafasi don't enter a place murmuring and grumbling take it by force that it's an opportunity that you have entered for those that are not married any man who comes to ask you to get married there's an opportunity don't close that door ask the lord but don't close the door bwana jesus we sana any lady that comes your way and you feel like this is my wife is an opportunity usiwache hii mwaka ya opportunity ifungike hallelujah any idea that comes to your mind is an opportunity any connection you get is an opportunity any access you get is an opportunity lastly what did we say the nature of this door is it is an open door who is jesus christ glory be to the name of the lord jesus is the pathway by which we access this ear he is the open door for us Le- listen to me even if people around your life banaese sfia sana have shut doors situations around your life have shut doors even if you look around you and you don't see any way when you call on the name of Jesus a way will be created did you hear me this open door is not only an opportunity it's not only access it's not only a way of escape but it is Jesus himself glory be to the name of the lord so ukijipata umefungika mahali and you have no opportunity there is no access there is no escape call on that name i'm saying call on that name call on that name in prayer call on that name in supplications call on that name by fasting call on that name with short prayers with long prayers with watchings call on that name and i'm telling you for sure you find a way through because he is the way in the wilderness amen i hope you have that in your heart and in your spirit but in a short while i want to bring the prophetic word the lord gave me very specific for this church i was supposed to share it on sunday but i knew that god would give us another opportunity and this one i want you to take it very seriously turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor take it very seriously not to take the other one less seriously but i want to take you to take this one very seriously since the lord spoke it to me specifically for life church international kasarani i know it may apply for other people who by faith they stretch like the woman with the issue of blood to even hold the garment or the, the like the woman who said even bread crumbs that fall for the ground to for, to the ground are taken by the dog bwana yesu sifia sana but very specifically i feel this is the bread for the children hii ndio mkate wa wana wa bwana katika kanisa hili I didn't sense faith. I just sensed some few people who are tapping in. Now, strategize your heart. Shake your neighbor and tell your neighbor, help me to have faith. Now hold the hand of your neighbor and pray for him in tongues for a minute or so. Pray for faith. Pray for faith to be ignited. Because if you don't mix, if you don't mix this word with faith, you have lost something very precious. Lord, I pray that the spirit of faith will land upon people that the gift of faith will be poured copiously upon people in the name of Jesus thank you holy spirit i also pray for understanding i also pray for wisdom i also pray for revelation in the mighty name of Jesus this word has been in my spirit and i pray the lord it will be in their spirit and not only in their spirit it will be actualized to the glory and honor of your holy name thank you jesus for the power is present to receive this word in jesus mighty name glory be to jesus hallelujah isaiah 54 verse number 1 isaiah 54 verse number 1 i will speak this word but it will land differently to many of you to some of you it will land probably even differently
to how that word has settled in my heart. But I pray how it lands in your spirit. May you receive it. And may you act on it. We have the bigger statement, open door. But I believe this word is inside, wrapped up specifically to give you divine direction on how to access the open door and how to utilize this. Let's read together because this will be very precious to all of us. One to go. Sing, O barren, you who have not born, break forth into singing and cry aloud, you who have not labored with the child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married woman, says the Lord. Enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not spare, lengthen your cords and strengthen your sticks. Verse 3. For you shall expand to the right and to the left and your descendants will inherit the nations and make the desolate cities inhabited. Do not fear, for you will not be ashamed, neither be disgraced, for you will not be put to shame, for you will forget the shame of your youth, and will not remember the reproach of your widowhood anymore. Verse 5. For your maker is your husband, the Lord of hosts is his name, and your redeemer is the Holy One of Israel, he is called the God of the whole earth. For the Lord has called you like a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit, like a youthful wife when you were refused, says your God. For a mere moment I have forsaken you, but with great masses I will gather you. With a little wrath I hid my face from you for a moment. But with everlasting kindness, I will have mercy on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. For this is like the waters of Noah to me. For as I have sworn for the waters of Noah would no longer cover the earth, so have I sworn that I will not be angry with you, nor rebuke you. Ten. For the mountains shall depart. And the hills be removed. But my kindness shall not depart from you. Nor shall my covenant of peace be removed. Says the Lord who has mercy on you. O you afflicted one. Tossed with tempest. And comforted. Behold I will lay your stones with colorful gems. And lay your foundations with sapphires. I will make your pinnacles of rubies, your gates of crystal, and all of your walls of precious stones. All your children shall be taught by the Lord, and great shall be the peace of your children. In righteousness you shall be established, you shall be far from oppression, for you shall not fear. And from terror, for it shall not come near you. Verse 15. Indeed, they shall surely assemble, but not because of me. Whoever assembles against you shall fall for your sake. Behold, I have created the blacksmith who blows the coals in the fire, who brings forth an instrument for his work. And I have created the spoiler to destroy. Verse 17. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue which rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. Glory be to Jesus. Give the Lord a praise. If indeed there is a chapter you need to make dear in your life, 
There's your Bible study chapter this year. Listen to me. I know Pascal will be sending us yearly, no, daily Bible study. But if you would desire in your heart to read this chapter daily from today, praise be to the name of the Lord. Read it aloud. Let it not depart from your mouth. Regurgitate it. Read it to your children. Read together with your children. Make it a discipline. One way, one, one, one year I, I decided to establish a culture of prayer and Bible study in my family. And God gave me a very good divine strategy. Strategy number one is that everybody must eat at the same time. And before we eat, we have to read the word and pray. It was during the 2020 COVID. And we made it a discipline in our family. And I can tell you, we were successful the whole of that year. I think I will recapture that one this year going forward in my family. Because last year was a little bit tumultuous for us to establish a, a consistent reading of the word. If you can be able to have this be your meditation daily, before you eat, before you go to sleep, or early in the morning before you take breakfast, if you are morning people in your family, <clears throat> I'm telling you, whatever you will read or you'll be reading from this scripture, every part of it will be fulfilled in your life. When the Lord was giving me this word, one of the things he told me is, cause my people to meditate on this word daily. Cause my people to meditate on this word daily. Now, four things, how about five, but four things that you have to capture from this thing that I've just read because it's a, it's a blessed word that the Lord has given to us. Number one, this will be a year of joy. God is going to put a new song of joy in your mouth. It will be a year of joy. Number two, it will be a year of expansion and multiplication. It will be a year of expansion. And multiplication. Number three, it will be a year of mercy. It will be a year of mercy. Great mercy. The masses of the Lord are opened for you daily. Number four, it will be a year of restoration. A year of restoration. A year of restoration. And I'm going to speak on those five areas I'm touching. And lastly, it will be a year of supernatural protection. Supernatural protection. So in short, to summarize that, is a year of entering into the heritage of the servants of the Lord. The heritage of the servants of God. When we begin to talk about heritage, we are talking about what has been handed over to you. And it becomes your environment it becomes your culture. It becomes your reality. It becomes your truth. I'll begin with the year of joy. Notice, I never said happiness. Nilisema nitakuwa musimu wa. What is joy? In Swahili. Mifura, and what is happiness? It's the same. 
Sour. Let me use joy. Happiness is conditioned by the environment. Sometimes you may not be happy because of what is happening around. But joy is more so a function of the spirit. Is a fruit of the spirit. Glory be to the name of the Lord. When you read Galatians chapter number 5, you find captured in the aspect of joy, of, of the fruit of the spirit. You can take me there. Galatians chapter 5 is joy. Joy is a product of your journey with the Holy Spirit. Are we together? You can never walk in joy if you don't walk with the Spirit. What is a fruit? A fruit is what you get as a result of intimacy. Are we together? Let me use agriculture. When fertilization occurs, in a plant, in a flower, then it buds and bears forth fruit. Are we together? When you walk in intimacy with the Spirit, so that the Spirit of God can continually begin to deposit His Word, His truth, His realities in your life, are we together? You eventually produce a fruit of joy. And that joy is everlasting. That fruit cannot be plucked out. It is a fruit that endures. Glory be to Jesus. It is a fruit that endures. And that joy is what the Bible says becomes your strength. Even in the midst of trying times, that joy becomes your strength. It is not a function of feelings. It is a function of convictions. You see, the other day, I was talking with one of my friends. And I was telling them, they were passing through a difficult moment at that time. And I was telling them, we were in my car. And I was telling them, do you think this car is worried about tomorrow? Are we together? And then I took the conversation further. I looked at our children. And I asked my friend, do you think these children are worried about tomorrow? They are not. Reason being, they have such a conviction and an assurance that their tomorrow is taken care of. I like the way my son makes demands. It's like I'm a superman. He will wake up, not wake up, but we are almost going to sleep, and he will tell me, Dad, I need a dog. Can we get a dog? And I think he wants it at that particular time. We go outside to get a dog and call that dog his dog. No, you know, he needs a dog, a German, very specific. I want a German shepherd dog at night. And he has such a confidence in his heart that the father can produce. So that if I portray an image as though I am unable to do it, he would be very disappointed. His world will come crumbling down. Because he is carrying some conviction. Glory be to the name of the Lord. And such is us when we walk with the spirit of the, of the Lord. There are things that are produced in us called convictions. That even though you are in the middle of the tempest like Jesus, you are asleep. You are glad. There is a joy that comes from conviction. Praise be to the name of the Lord. That makes you sing when you are in prison. Glory be to the name of the Lord. That you're facing the hardship head on. Because in as much as this year is a year of open doors. The way it is a year of open doors is not the way you think. Glory be to the name of the Lord. It is an open door because deep darkness covers the face of the earth. 61 is a year. Glory be to the name of the Lord. The joy of the believer is very different from the joy of the saint. We don't draw opportunities as believers from where, no, 60, sorry, not 61. Let's read one to go. Arise, shine, for your light has come, 
And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Is in this an open door? Verse 2. For behold, what happens? The darkness shall cover the earth and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen upon you. That's why this year is an open door for the believer. Because when it's dark in the system of the world, when it's troublesome, when the people are crying out, out of peril, when there is no confidence in the world, we that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, that's when our door opens. So, cast is the man who puts his trust in another man. Are we together? Cast also is the man who tries to wait for the world to be okay. For him to be okay. Things might not be the way you expect in the world. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Actually, if I may foreshadow personally what I sense is that there will be a lot of calamity in the world as it is. But for the believer. But for the believer, that will be the opportunity for your Jesus to arise over you. Glory be to the name of the Lord. And listen to me. As the world around you crumbles and looks for help, they will come running towards you. And that will be the open door. Continue verse 4. Uh, sorry, verse 3. Let's read. The Gentiles shall come to your light. They will come asking, how are you doing business? How are you? How does it seem that you are the one making it around here in this aspect? How are you keeping your children together? How come they are going to school? And they will have been coming to your light. And kings and rulers to the brightness of your rising. Because though darkness is covering the face of the earth, for you it's an open door. Go to our theme verse in Revelation chapter number 3. You see it's the same thing. The open door coming upon the church of Philadelphia is not because the world is at peace. It's because there is an hour of darkness that is coming. The church of Philadelphia very quickly. Let's read together. And to the angel of the church of Philadelphia write this thing says he who is holy, he who is true, he who has a key of David, he who opens and no one shuts and he who shuts and no one's open, no one opens. Verse number eight. Very quickly. I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door, and no one can shut it. For you have a little strength, and I've kept my word, and I've not denied my name. Verse number eight. Nine, sorry. Indeed, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who say that they are Jews and they are not, but lie indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet. To know what I have loved you. Have you seen the correlation? Gentiles will come to you. Let's continue verse 10. Because you have kept my command to persevere. I will also keep you from what? From the hour of trial. We shall come upon the whole world. To test those who dare, dwell on the earth. Listen to me. This open door is a door of distinction. It's a door that marks you out from the rest of the pack. It's a door opening in Goshen. Well, in Ramesses, in Egypt, there is darkness. In the land of the Israelites, there is light. When there are locusts and flogs, frogs, in this land of the chosen ones, there is an open door. Glory be to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to his holy name. So that's why you need to be clothed with the word of God. The word of God produces joy as a result of conviction. And that's when even if you are barren, you begin to sing because there is a word over your life. There is a word of an open door in your life. Even if everything seems to be shut up, you sing open door. You produce songs of open door. Your statement is different. It's not produced. Your songs are not produced by the happiness of the world. But the joy that comes as a result of the conviction by the word of God. May that be your portion in this season. May your confessions be as a result of the song of the Lord deposited by the word of God into your spirit. May not the situations around you change your conversation. May the conviction of the word of God spoken over your life become your song. In the name of Jesus, may you not depend on other things to produce joy for your life. 
Hallelujah. May God's word, when you remember his word, when you remember his truth, when you remember the realities that he has spoken to you, the prophetic word of the Lord, may you burst out with a song. May you break forth with a song. This joy will be so much that you cannot contain it. It will just burst forth. People will be waiting for you to crash, but you burst forth with a statement of joy in the name of Jesus Christ. Because even if the situation around you does not look as so. Because the one who is being told here to labor, to, to, to burst forth the song is one who has not labored with the child. There's a prophetic word to Israel which has been captured to the Jewish people. And it's a prophetic word to Jerusalem, the city of the Lord, the people of God, who are currently in exile. And Jerusalem is being prophesied over as the barren woman. Are we together? They are currently in exile under the domain of the Persians, the Babylonians. Glory be to the name of the Lord. And the prophet is seeing something in the spirit. Are we together? He is speaking over the city of Jerusalem, over the nation of Israel. And he is telling the nation of Israel, you that has been made desolate, you that has been made deserted, you that your children have been taken away, your city lays in ruins, now begin to sing. Glory be to Jesus. And many of you might have begun this year this way. Feeling barren. Feeling blocked. Boxed. Limited. Intimidated. Without nothing. But your way out in this year is a song of joy. The song of being convicted that whatever God has spoken over your life is yes and amen. You must sing it every day. Not produced by what you feel or what you see in your bank account or what you see in your family or what people are saying in the midst of the crisis. Let the word of God break forth and sing those songs of joy in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. And you say, many are the dollars in my account. Many are the monies that I carry. Many are the products I bring from abroad. Many are the things that will continue to happen for me this year. In the name of Jesus Christ. Than even for those who are sure of having it. Because they can see it with their eyes. Let me tell you, your blessing is more sure than those that are convicted of their blessing. Because of the strategies they have. And because of the convenience they have. You know, there are people who are assured of this year because of the things they are seeing physically. But the scripture tells me that which is not seen is more permanent than which is that which is being seen. Because that which is being seen is transient. It is passing away. Glory be to Jesus. You, your hope is in what you don't see is in the word of God which frames what is seen. And I came to declare, you have more than what it takes for you to win in this year. The word of God is enough for you. People are waiting for things to be joyful, but for you, you got the word of God. You have the prophetic word of God. That one is enough to make you joyful. Dance because you have the word of the Lord. It is not rare for you. If you have no reason to be happy this year, rejoice because the word of God is with you. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, this is a year of enlargement. And this is what the Lord spoke to me. Already the Lord has spoken to us about the door of opportunity. When you hear about enlargement, don't wait for enlargement to happen. That's not how you receive enlargement. That's not how you receive increase. You don't receive increase by waiting for increase. Let me repeat that. You don't receive increase by waiting for increase. You receive increase by making room. You must begin making room this year for enlargement in every area of your life. Even if it's marriage, make room. Come out of the bed seater by faith. Young man, get a one bedroom and say this is because of my marriage. 
I'm making room. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise be to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Make room for enlargement. If you are waiting for God for an opportunity in your career, make room for it. Probably it requires more skill. Go back to school. Enroll in something. Enlarge your capacity. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Probably it's in your business. Make room according to what God has availed for you. Make room according to the vision, according to the desire in your heart. As a church, you are going to make room. As a church, we are going to make room. A major room. By the month of April, we'll be having very big room here. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Turn to your neighbor, tell your neighbor, make room. Amen. You don't wait for increase by just waiting for increase. I remember when we expanded this church, we did not have a lot of people when we expanded it this way. But look at it now. And this is not one of our best Sundays. <laughs> but we made room. You make room, increase comes. So this year, begin making room. You want to be tithing more. Make room. Are we together? Make room. Begin expanding the way you give. Glory be to Jesus. Make provision. I like what Isaac said when he dug the well of Rehoboth. He did not say God has made us to increase. He said God has given us room to increase. He saw Rehoboth as a room to increase. So when you make room for increase, then increase comes. There are two things that are not your consequence. Are we together? Increase and promotion. That's not your work. Turn to your neighbor, tell your neighbor, increase and promotion is not your work. Don't ever try to increase yourself. Don't ever try to promote yourself. It is God who increases the seed. It is God who increases the bread. It is God who gives the increase. That is scripture. Are we together? When a woman conceives, it's not her work to increase the baby. Her work is to create room. <laughs> what happens inside there is God who does it. When you plant seed, it's not your work to make it grow and increase and bear fruit. Or there's a day you, you, plant, you plant a banana and then you go every day there to pray, Father, I pray for the first one to come out. The second one to come until it's a bunch. You are interceding for the... <laughs> Yours is just to make sure you are making room, necessary room for the banana when it begins, it begins to bear its fruit, the bunch will not be hindered by anything. But it is God who decides this banana will have 24 bananas. This bunch will have 24. The other one will have 12. This tree will have 100 mangoes. And I have seen a beautiful mango tree over there hanging on our side. <laughs> he and the left could hang for two. Hallelujah. I'm not coveting my neighbor's property. I'm just saying my observation. But are we together? But it's, we, we did not pray or the person in charge there was not even concerned about how but if he constrained that tree not to expand and not to grow, he will not be having that increase. Because it's not for him to bother about the increase. The increase is the Lord's. Glory be to the name of the Lord. As is to create room, avail opportunity for the Lord who increases to increase us. That's why this church, we will enlarge the place of our tent. Now listen to me. Making room is in four steps. Number one, you must enlarge the place of your tent. Remember, there's a prophetic word to Jerusalem. It's being told, enlarge the place of your dwelling. 
Glory be to the name of the Lord. You must begin of thinking of vastness in terms of your influence, in terms of your increase. You must begin broadening the space. Glory be to the name of the Lord. And that comes in your mind realm. The enlargement of the place of your dwelling is expanding your thought pattern. You must consciously in the presence of the Lord and prayerfully begin to enlarge the scope of your thinking this year by the grace of God. Every mental barrier must be broken. You must not fear thinking because of your past experiences. Some of us have been squeezed too small on what we can think about our lives. But I am referring you back to Ben Carson's book, which we read every one of us when we were teenagers. It was the first gift you were given. Think big. Please remember the story of Ben Carson and begin thinking big. That's Seventh-day Adventist. Begin thinking big. Glory be to Jesus. You might have hard statements. Throw away that trash that is cluttering your space and create enough room. Some of you must physically do it. Begin throwing away the old clothes. Glory be to the name of the Lord. The old plastics. Chupas are sold as 10 years ago. Tupa. Ati unachotelea maji unaweka. Tupa. Why do we keep those things? Nimeguza hapo. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. There are some things you must begin to change. Make room for increase. Make room for new clothes. Give them away. Enter your wardrobe. Give them away. Just begin doing some prophetic act to make room in your life. If you have the capacity to move to a larger place so that even consciously and psychologically as you pray, you are prepared for increase, do it in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. If you are a businessman, get a better premises. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Begin trusting God for it. Let me tell you, one of the ways to know that God has spoken to you is that after this meeting, if you begin to hear people telling you, you know that that is God speaking to you. Make room. Are we together? Or an opportunity comes, just make room. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. But also in the consciousness of your mind, your thought patterns, how you think about yourself. What are those things that you have been told that have informed the choices you make today? That have anyone trying to squeeze your opportunity in life? Even if it's me as a pastor, take that trash away. Are we together? Be freed in the spirit to think beyond your capacity. Let nobody sit on your space. You are not constrained in your abilities. You have eternity within you that is wishing to break out. God put a spirit in you. You are just a container. You are just a container of eternal realities. The opportunities locked up in you are so much by the power of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit is from eternity to eternity. You are just restraining the, your abilities. I don't know how well I can put this. You are restraining the abilities within you. This body is a limiting force. It limits whatever is contained within you. But when you begin to swim in the spirit, pa, you broaden your capacity. Some of you are limited at your job places. But by the grace of God, in the name of Jesus, I pray the power of the spirit within you will broaden the expanse of your mind like an ocean. You begin to see opportunities even if you are just a clean at your place of work. Where you are in the name of Jesus, may God cause you to expand and explode whatever capacities and whatever power is levied in you and invested in you by the heavenly king of glory. Let it explode. Let it explode. 
Glory be to Jesus. Let it explode. You can't be contained by your job description. You are built for more than that. That is what was in Joseph. I'm saying that is what was in Joseph. Even when they put him in prison. What is in him? The dreams conceived in the spirit could not keep him there. When he was put in the pit, they had to pick him up. He was good for debt. But when the merchants show up, he was a good commodity. Glory be to the name of the Lord. When he appeared in Israel, he, in Egypt, he became a slave. But within a short while, he had to become a master of slaves. Glory be to the name of the Lord. When he entered the palace, he was just an interpreter of dreams. But within a nick of time, he was the second in command. Why? Because of what is contained in him. And that is the same thing contained in you. The spirit of God. The breath of the almighty. The work of Adonai is within you. It cannot be restrained within you this season. Enlarge the place of your tent. May whatever you think about yourself become what you are. In the name of Jesus Christ. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Don't think of yourself as a grasshopper. That's what they did. And grasshoppers they became. And none of them was able to enter. It's only Joshua and Caleb. Glory be to Jesus. Who was able to enter. Because he told, just, he told Moses, we are well able. Let's go up and take that land now. In the midst of that limit, the mind of Caleb was so broad, was so expansive, was not intimidated, was not full of fear. He already had even, you know, seen a mountain which would be his mountain. He had already captured his territory. The territory where the sons of Anak were, the land which they were saying was swallowing their people, that very place is where he had seen as his mountain. And he was not ready to let it go because of what they had seen. He had a report in his mind. There were convictions. His place of dwelling was enlarged. May your place of dwelling be enlarged this year. Don't take no for an answer. When you have conceived it in your mind, go full throttle in the name of Jesus. Number two, do and then says do not spare. That is in the first part. Number two, lengthen your cords. Listen to me. Tents like these ones, they need cords. Are you seeing cords? Cords are like ropes that do what? That tie the tent when you want it to be long enough and well taut. Are we together? Well tight. The cords here, as I got it from the Lord, are the things that determine our relationships. For our minds to avail room for increase, for enlargement, this season, you must lengthen your cords with the Holy Ghost. Your relationship with God must be lengthened. Your times of intimacy with God must be lengthened. Because it doesn't matter whether you have increased your thinking capacity. If your tent will not cover the whole expanse, you will not have made room for the Lord to bring increase. You must lengthen your cords. Your relationship with God must be lengthened. Your times of prayer must be lengthened. Your times of meditation must be lengthened. Are you listening to me? They must be lengthened. Your times of devotion. This is not the year to give God little hours. Your prayers must be long and effective. 
Spend much time with God. That's how you'll be able to stretch your curtains. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. That's how you'll be able to stretch your capacities. Stretch your capacities to fit with what you are thinking. Or what God has given to you. Or what God has shown you. The vision that God has shown you. Your intimacies must be lengthened. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Lengthen your relationship with other believers. Not only with God, but with other believers. Extend hand of fellowship to other people who are of the same faith, who share the same creed, who share the same hope. This is not the year to be alienated. This is a year to connect with one another. How do you lengthen cords? It's by tying cords with other cords, with other cords. Where you fail, someone else is rising in that place. Strengthen one another. If you fail in prayer, there's somebody who is anointed. If you fail in the study of the word of God, someone else has an anointing, has a grace. You know, we need to join with one another so that the, 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 the cord of connecting with God can be strengthened. Lastly, Strengthen your sticks. Hold on to your conviction. You cannot be hearing something from God and then you begin to double it up or to have a double-mindedness. You must strengthen your sticks. If you have said, this is what God is saying concerning my life. This is what I'm hearing. Please, Ground yourself on it. Meditate on it. Keep your conversations about it. Don't trade it for anything. Joshua chapter 1. Meditate on this word daily. That make sure it will not depart from your mouth. Glory be to the name of the Lord. So that you may have good success. This is not the year of saying one thing today. You are saying the other tomorrow. This is not the season of saying one thing. And declaring another one tomorrow. Because of fear. Strengthen your sticks. Sometimes when you are strengthening your sticks. Everything will be telling you no. You will tear the tent. But strengthen your stick. Have you ever been in this work of trying to expand something? Let me use an example that is near to you recently. Blowing a balloon. You see sometimes I will be blowing a balloon for my son. And then you tell me, Daddy, stop, stop, stop. It will burst. It will burst. Daddy, stop. And that's how some of us are in the spirit. We are telling God it will burst. <laughs> Hallelujah. It will not burst. This is the year of strengthening your sticks. If this is what God has declared over your life, which God is declaring over your life. Strengthen that conviction. Hold on to it. Nothing will tear. Why am I saying that? The Bible tells us don't spare. Don't spare. This is not the year of sparing your capacity. Don't spare your innovative creative mind. For 2025. Don't spare it. I'm saying don't spare it. Those ideas, don't spare them. Life church, don't spare any coin. Don't spare any conviction, strength, energy. Don't spare it. If God tells you go for seven days, don't spare. Don't say you'll get sick. But I have never done. Don't spare. This year, don't spare. Don't spare. Don't spare. Don't spare. Many of us have spared. If it's an investment, don't spare. I'm telling you the truth. As long as it's birthed from the place of prayer, don't spare. We will not spare this year. Don't spare. Don't spare. Go back to Isaiah 54. Don't spare. Hey. Don't spare anything for 2025. Live as though this is your last year on earth. What would you do? What would you do if this was your last year on earth? Levine, what would you do if the Lord told you, behold my daughter, I'm taking you this year. Do whatever you should do to accomplish your task. What would you do? Hallelujah. 
Don't spare. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your sticks. And this is a promise the Lord has given us this year as we enlarge. Verse 3. You shall expand to the right and to the left. Your descendants will inherit the nations and make the desolate cities inhabited. Whatever you produce, even if not physically, whatever you produce physically in your mind, the fruit of your womb, the fruit of your hands, the fruit of your lips, whatever fruit you carry, the fruit of your spirit, praise be to the name of the Lord, is your descendant. What descends from you, what comes out of you, will have the capacity to occupy nations in the name of Jesus. Your ideas, write them down, but let them jump from the paper and make room for them. Begin doing something towards it. Let me tell you, if you don't have anything to do tomorrow, make room for something. Make room for something. Even if you wake up and you're stuck, you have nowhere to go, you don't have fear, but you have bundles, make room in your mind for something. Acquire an idea. Acquire a skill. Acquire some knowledge about what God wants you to do this year. And as you avail the room, opportunity, meeting preparedness is what is called favor. When opportunity meets preparedness, that is what is called favor. Because if opportunity comes and meets an unprepared person, you cannot say you're favored. It will be a disappointment. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Don't spare. Turn to your neighbor, tell your neighbor you are expanding. To the right, to the left. You will capture every territory God has set for you. You know, Jabez made a prayer. And some of you need to make that prayer this season. When he realized his life is limited by his name and by the situation of his background, he said, oh Lord, that you may enlarge my coasts. Bless me indeed. Enlarge my coast. Some of us, we need to make that prayer this season. Enlarge my coast. But make sure the lengthened cords are in operation. Your intimacies with the spirit are not for a minute. If there is a problem you make in this season, is to fellowship with the Holy Spirit as though you are timing him. Please, have long time with the Spirit of God. Lengthen. Do you know what you'll be doing? You'll be opening up your spiritual vessel to receive from the Lord. Take time with the Holy Ghost. Three hours a day, even if you scatter them, stagger them, just do something to make sure you're in tune with the Holy Spirit. Because I know in this season, He is dropping things in your heart that will increase you. Listen to me. There is a guarantee. As you create room, verse 4. As you create room, there is a guarantee. Let's read all of us. Verse number 4. Do not fear. You will not be ashamed. There is a guarantee. There is a guarantee. You will not be ashamed. Do not fear. If I be a man of God, which I am, <laughs> carry this word. This year you will know. This is a guarantee. This is an insurance policy. If you can type it, type it and put it on the doorpost of your house and say, I am guaranteed that this year I cannot be ashamed. Whatever efforts I'm applying to make room, I will not be ashamed. Glory to Jesus. As I lengthen my cords with the Holy Ghost and with the Father and with my wife and with all my destiny helpers, my God, I will not be ashamed. As I strengthen my conviction, I will not be ashamed. Glory be to Jesus. Neither be disgraced, for you will not be put to shame. Do weird things to the eyes of people. With this conviction, I will not be ashamed. Glory be to Jesus. I'm saying glory be to Jesus. You know, what we did here on 31st, we, we, we looked at all our accounts. We could not do anything. We couldn't. It 
was costing us almost 400. I think it even came to 400 and some thousand. I'm not very sure. We didn't have anything at the end of the year as a church. But I'm telling you, my God, we made room. We began calling people. Provide for us tent. Bring them. We'll send you the money. Don't worry. Zaga, zaga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Within a week, we made room. Wasn't the room filled with people? Didn't people get born again? Glory be to the name of the Lord. That is my joy. Didn't we have the sessions? Did we have them there? Blessed be the name of the Lord. Why? We will not be disgraced. Whatever we do, having heard from him, you will not be ashamed. This is the word of the Lord. For you will forget the shame of your yesteryears, of your youth. Some of you have been too ashamed because of things you tried many years ago. But we are in the year of the open door. Where every word that God has spoken of you, your life will come to fruition. Don't be ashamed. I'm saying it. Don't be ashamed. Don't be dismayed. Whatever word God has spoken to you will surely come to pass. You will not remember the reproach of your widowhood. Those days that you are abandoned. That you felt like God was not together with you. That you had been handed over to creditors. Handed over to all forms of oppression. Those days you will not remember. This is an insurance policy. Whatever you do in his name this year. Keep on muttering this word. And the Lord will be for you in Jesus name. What else did we say this year is a year for? Is a year for mercy. Glory be to the name of the Lord. God is extending his masses extravagantly to your life this year. Listen, I want you to deal with God this year as the God who shows mercy. Many of you have known the God who judges, the God who condemns, and he does all those things. But this year the Lord is visiting us with much mercy. And the verse that God gave me to ascertain this thing in my heart is verse 9. And despite of your failures of yesterday, please don't approach God with guilt. I want you to come to the Lord knowing that he is full of mercies and compassions. Let's read together. For this is like the waters of Noah's to me. For as I have sworn that the waters of Noah would no longer cover the earth, so have I sworn that I will not be angry with you, nor rebuke you. Listen to me. Believe this word. I want you to believe this word. The Lord is not angry with you. The Lord will not rebuke you. You've had enough of that. This season. The masses of God. Hi. Some of you are so accustomed to rebukes and anger. But the Lord is turning the leaf around. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm saying the Lord is turning the leaf around. You have come to a moment where the Lord is coming upon you with this great extravagant masses. Lift up your hand and say that's my portion. It doesn't matter your errors of 2013 and 2014 up to here and before. I declare today in the name of Jesus, let God's masses be upon you. Anytime you pray for forgiveness, may you experience it. In the mighty name of Jesus, God will not deal with you according to your wickedness. God will deal with you according to his great masses. Even beginning from this day. In Jesus mighty name. Go to verse 10. Be convicted that this is a year of God's mercies. You have made bad choices. But return to the Lord. Yes repent. Return to him. Turn away from your wickedness. And know that the Lord has come to you. With mercies. Are we together? Some of us find ourselves in situations whereby. It's like we are done and dusted. We can't even have God come through for us in another way because we messed up. But this is your year. This is your year. There are situations that have been hard even for you to pray 
or even to sense breakthrough because you think you really failed God and people like you don't deserve any other chance. But 2024 is an open door for mercy. God's mercy are being multiplied. God is showing mercy. The scripture will be fulfilled where it is written, where sin doth increase, so does the grace of God. I came to give you good news this day. God will show you mercy. I'm saying God will show you mercy. And one of the proof is that even people that had disqualified you will begin to show you mercy. Because when God shows you mercy, who can condemn you? Who can stand against you? They will accept you. Even those that had rejected you, God will show you mercy. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but I'm speaking to somebody. You are not done yet. He is opening a new window of opportunity for you. You are not a reject. You are not a statistic. You are not a display of what the devil can do. God is beginning a fresh leaf with you in this season. For the mountain shall depart and the hills shall be removed. But my kindness shall not depart from you. Nor shall my covenant of peace be removed. What is this covenant of peace? Do you know what is a covenant of peace? The covenant of peace is whereby when you stand before God, you are at peace with God. And God is at peace with you. That covenant is established through the cross of Jesus Christ. And the Lord is saying, it shall not be removed. The covenant of Christ over your life cannot be removed. The masses of God through his son Jesus Christ are revealed to you from day to day. That says the Lord who has mercy on you. Verse number 11. Let's continue. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, let's read together. Oh, you afflicted one, tossed with the tempest, and not comforted. Behold, I will lay your stones with colorful gems. Say number three, restoration. God is going to restore you. But before I go to restoration, Verse number seven. Because this one is important. Verse number seven and eight. Let's read one to go. For a mere moment. Turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor up to now. Since I was born. To 2024. 7th of January. It will be a mere moment. It's a mere moment. When I will look back. At those years. I will call it a mere moment. Come on say for a mere moment. I have forsaken you. But with great masses, I will gather you in the name of Jesus. May the masses of the Lord be shown upon you. Verse number 8, continue. Glory be to Jesus. Verse number 8. With a little wrath. Let's read together. With a little wrath, I hid my face from you for a moment. But with January kindness, March kindness, February kindness, December kindness, October kindness, what kindness? Everlasting, everlasting, they last forever. I will have mercy on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. Glory be to Jesus. Let's go to the, that part. Verse 11. God is restoring you. God is rebuilding you. God is making the desolate places to be inhabited again. Listen, this is what the Lord is saying. I will lay your stones with colorful gems. Your restoration will be a beautiful restoration with precious stones, foundations with sapphires. Glory be to the name of the Lord. The Lord is speaking to us and telling us he is restoring us gloriously. Restoration is assured and it's glorious it will look glorious. Your life will be glorious. Your children will be taught of the Lord. What does that mean? No one needs to tell you to know the Lord in this season. The Lord will reveal himself to you personally. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. Did you love that? God will restore you to a place where God will reveal to you himself personally. You even don't need to be told the way of the Lord by anybody. When I preach here, it will be a confirmation. 
you'll be taught of the Lord. You are receiving an anointing to know what to do with your time, to know what to do with your life, to know what to do with your relationship with God. When you come here, you'll be knowing what the Lord is already saying over your life. I'll be just coming to confirm, to speak a second time, so that you may know that what was spoken to you was of the Lord. But you already have known that this is what the Lord is telling you to do. You'll be taught the ways of the Lord. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. No one will need to tell you know the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In the nick of time, you'll know how to handle those situations. You will be taught by the Lord. Lastly, as they come to an end, you will enjoy supernatural divine protection. The Bible says, oppression will be far from you. Verse 14, terror will not come near you. I want you to rest this year. Even as we fight supernatural, sorry, spiritual battles, Glory be to the name of the Lord. Bore, you will, you will, I'm on some medication. Even when you're fighting battles this year, listen to me. Even when you're fighting battles, there will not be your battles. There will be the battles of fathering the kingdom of God. Your battles are taken care of. Let me repeat that. Your battles are taken care of. You'll be battling for the kingdom. You'll be battling for the kingdom. Your battles are taken care of. Look at verse number 15. Let's read together one to go. Indeed, they shall surely assemble but not because of me whoever assembles against you shall fall any gathering gathering against us it is not summoned by God and when they gather they will fall hey any gathering against pastor James any gathering put your name there any gathering against life church shall be for their falling, not for our falling. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Goziah Mahanda. Whoever assembles, let me tell you, the problem will be their assembling. Their problem. Kile kitawakula ni kuungana. Tafadhali hii mwaka. Utijaribu kuungana juu yangu. Against me, please. Ukijipata kwa community kanaongea kinyume ya Pastor James kimbia. Hii mwaka kimbia. Tushaachilia uchawi grade 1. E. E. Please don't don't try. Even on WhatsApp group don't. Hii mwaka usijaribu. Sio mimi nimesema. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't gather against me. Don't gather against anyone in this church. Don't gather against this ministry. You will fall. Your gathering will be a license. Yani hiyo kahawa mtakunywa itakuwa signature ya kwamba tumeanguka. Sio nyinyi hao. Zako ya gada. In the name of Jesus. Hey, Kayasa, Etelia, Razusa, Sai, Eshature, Ananiata, Kaya, Eparoga, whoever gathers, whatever and wherever, whatever they discuss against my life, against the church, against your family, against your children, against your marriage, against your work, against your business, it will be a signature for their falling. For they are falling. Oh my God. It's God. Who has created the blacksmith. It's God. Who blows the coals in the fire. It's God who creates the one who blows the coals in the fire. It's God who creates the one who brings forth an instrument of his work. It's God who creates the spoiler. And the destroyer. And you know what this God says over your life? 
no weapon fashioned. Whether a spiritual weapon, whether a physical weapon, ata uchawi. It is God who creates those that destroy. It's God who creates those that make instruments of destruction. Even the Muganga in the village, he has been created by God. It is God who creates the one who is commissioned for spoiling and the one who is commissioned for destruction. But this God says, no weapon. Hey! Karoza Yabaha formed against you will prosper. No poison cooked, prepared, skimmed, trap, even at the place of work. Hata wakikuekelea vingenyo. Vingenyo is a Greek word. That is a demonic strategy of malice and slander against your life. When they plot, my God, what they don't know is that they have been made spoilers and destroyers by God. But this is what the Holy One of Israel says. Ete, koya, taya, ekayusa, kama, stand up on your feet. I sense an anointing here. Oh my God, Jadoshaya. There are strategies against this church to bring it down this day in the name of Jesus. But those are not our battles. Katoya Razaya, Etaya Ragadia, E Zagaya Baga. We have the heritage of the saints. We enter the heritage. It is an open door to the heritage of the saints. Karozaya Baga, Etaya Rabaga, E Razikataya, Etaya Bagaza, in a tongue that is fashioned against the stars from this Sunday. Hey, 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 Kazagadaba, 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 Kadozayaba, Jatorazia, Etayalabaga, Zikatoza, Lebadadia. You are not praying well. You are not praying well. Ediazaga. Koshatoyaba. Zatayagadia. Ezatoyaba. Zatayagadia. Ezatoyaba. Zatayagadia. Ezatoyaba. Come on, get in on on prayer. Get in on on prayer. This year you will not fight your battles. This year you will not fight your battles. You fight the battles for the kingdom. You are enlisted as a soldier of the kingdom.